You know what my initial thoughts were. You watched the ups and downs, you watched it for the whole season. Uh, I'm assuming, if you didn't, no problem at all. They're all still there, go back and enjoy. They were our initial reactions to each episode as they came out. The final episode, when it aired, straight away there was division online about it there was people who loved it and people who hated it people who thought that it was a great sum up to a strong season or people who thought it was a damp squib to an increasingly not great season i am here today with the benefit of a bit of time to sit on some of the things that have happened in the finale to go back through and we're going to it's not like we're going to do another ups and downs, but we're going to take specific plot points from the episode and we're going to address the biggest question, Star Trek Picard season two finale. Was it good or was it bad? Number 10, Talon's death. So we did get Orla Brady in this season a lot more than we got her in season one. And so for that, I am massively, massively grateful. The first episode featuring Laris was stunning. And then we got the character of Talon as the season went on. Her death scene in this to take the place of Rene Picard so that Rene can go off on the Europa mission, it seemed very fitting that Orla Brady's character would sacrifice herself for Jean-Luc. The problem here is that the relationship was with Laris and Picard. Now, while arguably we got more time between Talon and Jean-Luc this season than we did between Picard and Laris overall, really, it actually it never really progressed to anything more than, frankly, colleagues working together. And so for there to be such an import put on her death scene in this episode, it's not to say that it wasn't, you know, emotional and aiming for the heartstrings. The problem was that I think it was supposed to come across as though, oh no, Laris is dying. Of course, it wasn't that. Not only for the fact that we, it clearly wasn't Laris, but also the speech was different. Of course, Orla Brady, who is a wonderful, wonderful Irish person, was using a pan-American accent for Talon. Straight away, you're taken out of the scene somewhat when, you know, just let her use her Irish accent. It just didn't have that emotional core that they needed. So for me, unfortunately, Talon's death, it just didn't really work. Plus, and this has been pointed out before, there was a close-up shot of Talon's eyes and they are massively bloodshot as she's dying. And, you know, it, it's meant to do, oh my God, she's clearly suffering. Talon is a Romulan. Those veins should be green. Unfortunately, the whole scene just didn't work for me. Number nine, Rene Picard. Now, Penelope Mitchell was very, very good this season. She didn't have an awful lot to do. If you take the scene where she sits down with Jean-Luc, just, it, you know, as part of that gala event, that's a wonderful scene. And it sets up this scene where Talon comes in, basically says, here, listen, there's a price in your head. And, you know, is there to well, as we discover, take her place in death, not on the mission. I feel slightly more positive about Rene Picard in the finale, mostly because we all knew she was getting on that rocket. There, that was never in question. I'm glad they didn't waste too much time trying to do a bit of a bait and switch. I mean, again, we had already known there was going to be face swapping technology going on, so we knew that, that Rene was going to survive this. And I do think... Overall, I think her scene in this episode worked. Her character was always just motivation for the others. It makes it hard to form an emotional attachment with that character, but I do think Penelope Mitchell brought, well, as much as she possibly could to the role. I did feel for this character. For me, I did like the way this storyline ended. Uh, the scene after it, I've already addressed with Talon, but. As it stands, I was quite happy with how Rene got on that rocket. Number eight, Q. Some people will be going, how is this not number one that you're gonna discuss? Because this entire episode lives or dies on John Delancey's scenes. Uh, he nailed it. That has not changed for me. I loved it in the ups and downs and I love it now. We saw a side of Q that you rarely had seen before. Probably the closest that we saw 
is the end of tapestry and the end of all good things. When you see the way he really cares for Picard. Now, we see that go an awful lot further in this episode. That moment where Q leans into Picard and says, you matter to me. It was... It was something I didn't know that I needed to see. Like, I've been watching Next Generation probably since early 90s, right? I'm not saying I remember an awful lot of it, but these characters have been in my life pretty much my entire life. And so to have one of them say to the other, you matter to me, followed by a hug, I'm sorry, but nostalgia, that kicks me straight in the combat. There is an inherent menace to the way that John Delancey plays Q. I think it's necessary. Q is a god to these characters. At any point, I mean, we are but ants to the gods. So, you know, kind of, they're just like, you know, kind of like, <laughs> do you know what, actually, nah, bye. He could, but he doesn't, and it works. Is it a bit saccharine? Pff, is it what? <laughs> but it doesn't mean that I didn't get engaged by the performances. If this is the end of Q, and it does feel like it, then I think it was a nice way to go out. I do think there's issues with it that won't necessarily, that might not have been addressed, obviously, in Picard. For example, if Q has died, it would have been a shame to not see a scene between him and Janeway, which, again, this show wasn't set up to do that. You know, potentially, you know, Q is timeless. You know, we can always bring him back again. Although... The point has been made that this was such a lovely goodbye scene to then just bring him back, even if he's out of time later on, might not necessarily work. We'll see. We'll see. For me, this works. Number seven, Wesley's cameo. Well, I think it's safe to say there were some feelings about this one online. Um, I liked it. I hear the criticisms. I'm not going to do this as a cop-out answer because... I want to address the criticisms, the first and foremost being that this did not feel like Wesley Crusher, this felt like Will Wheaton. Understandably, somebody might be like, well, it is Will Wheaton because he's literally there, you can see him, he's on screen. Hello, Will. And sure, but there wasn't enough difference between actor and character in this scene. Uh, in fact, that it sounded like he was just, he had walked off the set of the ready room and walked onto the set of Picard. There is a degree of fairness to that. Uh, Wesley's cameo entirely relies on nostalgia. Because obviously, like, let, let's be honest, anybody watching Picard who hadn't watched Next Generation, of which there are some people, wouldn't have a clue who he is. Whereas we know this is his first speaking role in Star Trek as Wesley for 28 years. I think it, it, it is pure, it is for the nostalgia baiters. I enjoyed it. I would like to see it go somewhere. That is, that is the big thing. If it was just two seconds, there's Wesley, hiya, bye. I already am going. I'm not really sure I've had the benefit of hindsight, but because I've now kind of built up in my head that potentially himself and Corey may turn up in other properties. There's nothing to suggest that they will so far other than it seemed like a pilot or at least a tease of a pilot for another series. So we'll have to see. Does the scene work on its own? It's fine. It was a waste of a return, if that's all. I think I, I will say that. If it doesn't go anywhere, I won't be as happy. Number six, Whoopi returns. She's wearing the uniform, or costume I should say, that looks an awful lot like what we saw her wearing in Generations, which of course is a massive, massive part of Picard's history, his trip with the Nexus, his trip through time. This is echoed in his trip through time here as well. And so to have him sitting down with Guinan in the bar, I really did enjoy that. Now, the return of Whoopi also serves the, the, the role of linking Ito Agaire's appearance earlier on in the season and also delivering the news of the fate of Rios. I think she did a great job, I have to say. Um, now, we only got the couple of scenes of Whoopi in season two, but still, listen, it was great because the return of Whoopi, on top of everything else, felt like an addressing of the criticisms of season one. Season one of Picard, for all of its, you know, for all of its perceived flaws and strengths, I think people were hoping for more of a next generation connection than we ended up getting. And we do see an addressing of that in season two. Her role is small in this episode. It's crucial because we get very important information, 
But again, I think the fact that you can just see how comfortable Whoopi Goldberg and Patrick Stewart are around each other in this scene, for me, I really enjoyed it. Number five, another sung, another can. I'm just going to come out and say it. There was no point for Adam Sung as a character to exist in Picard season two. Now, I would watch Brent Spiner read the phone book. Okay, it was delightful to have him there, but to have another Sung and one that seems to have been by the scenes delivered in the finale, purely included to set up Arik Sung. At least that's how I'm, that's how I think this final scene was. So he's sitting there, Corey's left and he pulls out the folder that says Project Khan. So Project Khan. So Khan was apparently the only augment, right? Now I did like, I still do like the fact that they have the 1996 date on the folder because that ties in with what we know of Khan's history of his leaving of Earth. Well, even in discussion with Dave Blass, you know, kind of, well, we know a different timeline has been created because of the events of the real world. So, so did the eugenics wars happen? Jury is still kind of out on that. I, I am sorry to say, yes, Adam Soong just didn't work for me as a character. He was the mustache twirling villain in this episode. Um, he kills Talon, you know, and then he, he sees the folder and then, but that's it. His only reason for being in this episode was to be an asshole. And I'm sorry, any character could have filled that role. If all this was, was to set up why the Soongs went into augmentation, I just felt it was a waste. Now, perhaps I'm being overly cruel. Perhaps I'm judging the whole season on that. I do think that Adam Sung at no point worked. Liked the performance, but the whole Adam Sung and Corey storyline for me, it just went nowhere. Uh, so for me, I'm sorry, I just didn't care for it. Number four, Rafi and Seven. Now, I'm actually gonna connect a little bit here with what we know about season three, because we do know that these two characters are returning for Picard's third season. We see that at the end, Rafi is sitting beside Seven on the bridge of the Stargazer. Seven is now captain of the Stargazer, at least in an acting capacity, because Rios, of course, remained in the past. We know that the, well, when Rafi left the future, she was first officer aboard the Excelsior. So as it stands, they are both Starfleet officers. The whole season teased their relationship more so than delivered on it. What I mean by that is that there was an awful lot of setting up things that didn't go anywhere. And in this episode, they finally embrace. Now, this is the point I made at the time and I'm making it again now. Queer baiting is something that creators often do to bring in their LGBTQIA plus audience on top of their non LGBTQIA plus audience to, you know, to kind of join the fandom and then kind of tease what they don't deliver on. And Star Trek was running the risk of doing that. Now, by having them embrace, by having them, I suppose, if you like, a very clear statement on screen that yes, they are together. I did like that. I do think it was a bit late in the season, but I did think it suited the two characters. Now we don't know, of course, where it's going to go from here in terms of will they serve aboard the same starship? In what capacity will we see them in the next season? One issue is it's not kind of the fault of this storyline, but to put Seven as acting captain of the Stargazer, which is a cool scene, so you have to get rid of Rios. And it means sending Rios back into the past. He says it to Teresa, and, which is great. Love Teresa, great. Almost opposing the point of this entry is just about crossing names off lists. You know, Seven's Captain Stargazer, great. Rios, stay behind. Okay. All right, so, oh, sorry, that's the end of Rios? Really? Fan favorite character, Rios? So it's a bit of a mixed one, I have to say. I've got mixed feelings about this. And again, it's not the fault of the characters, it's where they were used. I am delighted that Rafi and Seven are returning next season, but it does feel like they were put up front to go like, hey, look who you got. Ah, don't worry about Rios, he's fine. It's like, all right, cool, okay. Kind of gonna miss Rios and those holograms, but all right then. So yeah, mixed feelings on this one. Number three, Elnor's a zombie. All right, well, not quite. The return of Elnor was silly. It wasn't earned. I feel it's done Evan Evagora a disservice. Killing him off in the first place, they basically, they fridged him so that Rafi would have an arc. Uh, Rafi then didn't have an arc. 
That, that, that is my issue for Rafi for season two. Everyone is very good in this finale. And it's, not, of course, it's great to see Elnor again. I, I don't like the fact that he was dead. You know, we see him in the bar at the end, but then within it felt like minutes, Evan Evagora confirmed that he won't be back for season three, which begs the question, what was the point of bringing him back? Now, whether it was just a case of like, listen, we just want to have a happy ending. You know, Elnor's alive, way. Well, Grant, I can understand that, I can. Hello. I'm Q, I'm dying, this is a massively emotional scene. Oh, I'm not sending Rios, Grant, here, have some Elnor. That's what it felt like. It didn't work, you might be like, Sean, will you come on now and stop being so mean? Poor old Elnor, all he wants to do is stay alive. And I'll be saying to you, sure listen, don't we all? Because we know he's not coming back, it was a bit like, great, so we got one scene of them sitting around a table. Okay then. That makes up for a whole season of missing Elnor. Number two, Borgatti. Alison Pill blew me away this season. The revelation of Jurati on the bridge of the Stargazer as the Borg Queen, for me, it was no great shock. I think, well, I mean, sorry, obviously you've seen the last couple of episodes, but you know what I mean. Like, I think they did set it up very, very well that it was a good reveal. I still think, I thought at the time, I think it was, I, I, I don't think any of it was necessary. Hello, I'm the Borg. Hello, I'm Jurati. Uh, listen, big old thing's gonna blow. Here, get your fleet. It's Starfleet. You know they would have done it anyway. So for me, I did feel that was far too convoluted. I still really, really like Alison Pill as the Borg Queen. And Annie Wershing was fantastic as her as well. And I just thought it was, overall, I thought the culmination of her story really worked for me. It really did. I wasn't 100% on the look of Borgati, um, but I'm being overly critical. Seemed to be able to blending with CGI and practical that I thought was a little bit fuzzy, but I'm I'm being really critical here because the whole thing looked so good. I mean, that entire scene with the Borg ship and the fleet around it at the end, uh, that's what we were waiting for, for from since episode one, even when that looked great. It goes a little bit further as well toward this definite attempt by the showrunners to address the issues of season one. Hmm, Starfleet, large fleet. I wonder what I'm talking about here. And they did address it and it looks great. For me, I, I have to say, I really liked it. Massively disappointed once again, Alison Pill has confirmed she won't be back for season three, which is just like, it does seem like this, the season finale was set up to get rid of fan favorites. We've lost Rios, where we've, well, we technically we've not lost Soji, although Issa Briones has confirmed she's not back for season three. Um, I suppose it never did. Elnor we're losing, you know, Evan Evagora. You know, it's kind of like, all right, so the only original character from Picard that we're kind of keeping at this point is Rafi. And anyway, anyway, tangent aside, Alison Pill was brilliant in this episode, brilliant in this season. Love her calm that she brings to the Borg. And for me, this worked. Number one, Jean-Luc Picard. Well, I suppose the whole thing lives or dies on whether you like JL or not. And I did. I, I really did. I thought, I thought Patrick Stewart really did a good job in this episode. Like we've seen so many shades of Picard up to this point, you know, both from the Next Generation days and the Picard days. I think he did great. There has been, as time's gone, there's been a lot of criticism about how the storyline around Yvette Picard was handled this season. And I do think a lot of that criticism is fair. I think that Patrick Stewart took an awful lot of the perceived trauma of Picard into his performance. I think that was very, very good. I don't like how they got to that trauma, or trauma, trauma, trauma. I don't like how they got there, but I do think he delivered in spades in this last episode. And we got some of the most Picard, Picard we've had since the show began. Of course, he is wonderful with John Delancey in those scenes. Once things calm down on the Stargazer, he's fantastic there as well. I would dearly love to know how he explains everything to Laris when he gets back home. If I have a criticism of the end of the episode, it would be not so much that I wanted it to end in a cliffhanger, because I didn't, but I would like some connective tissue as to what to expect for season three. I, I did think and continue to think that the dropping of the season three trailer midway through season two was an odd 
choice from the marketing team. I do think that we're, we've already seen little tidings of what to expect from season three. Now, I won't go too far into it because we do in fact have lists coming now of what we know and what we can expect in season three. So they will drop with you presently. I think it's set up a version of the future I want to see for season three. It's teased us with enough that I'm happy with where we're going. I am sad to lose some of the characters that we did. Uh, if we don't get Order Brady next season as a full season of Laris, I, 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 I might get a bit, give it a down every episode. We'll have to see. I'm so excited for the return of the entire main cast, although as of recording, the only main cast member from season one we've not heard anything about is Denise Crosby. So to get to the final point of this video, Star Trek Picard season two finale, good or bad, I guess I don't really have an answer for you. And I hear people rage quitting this video and you know what? That's fine. I think it will come down to taste at the end of the day. I was asked directly, where do I stand on this episode? And to be honest, if you look at the ups and downs, we've got 11 ups and five downs. I think a good episode is an episode where the ups outnumber the downs. And it did for me this week. This week, this episode, this installment. I thought it did. I thought it was good. I think every episode can be both better and worse. So it's not really fair to say it could be better, but I will be tuning into season three. I hope you will be as well. Let us know where do you come down on this episode in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Remember, you can catch us over on Twitter at Trek Culture. You can catch myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Look after yourselves until I see you again. Make sure that you live long and prosper. Make sure you join us for the What's Coming in Season 3 videos, which are coming up. My friends in Ukraine, stay strong. Everyone, have a wonderful day. Like it so.